So the first thing we need to do is figure out what you even need to track as a medical student on rotations. Okay, I think we can bracket medical school rotations into distinct categories and then figure out further details that might be relevant. First are lessons from rounds, residents, and attendings. I've found that I've learned a lot in these situations and it's been helpful to write things down. Next, articles, lectures, textbooks. This is all pretty self-explanatory. Third, especially for your surgical rotations or sub-eyes, you're definitely good to have a place to keep track of surgical tutorials and guides. Learning how to clinically evaluate a patient for a specific chief complaint. And finally, the most important for third year students and I guess to an extent sub eyes if you haven't taken step two is studying. People generally like to complete either AMBOSS or your old questions. And so you wanna make sure you're keeping track of those as well. The first advantage is offline search. It was actually a time during one of my fourth year sub eyes on ENT where I needed to pick out some information that I knew I had. I was using Notion at the time and you guys know how much I love Notion, but there was no service in this OR. And as a result, I literally could not find the information that I needed even though I knew I had it. It's not the end of the world in the grand scheme of things, but it was enough for me to go, hmm, I need a solution that can actually work offline. The next critical feature that Apple Notes has is Spotlight Search. The beauty of it is that you can really access it from anywhere on your iPad or on the home screen on your iPhone. With just a keyboard shortcut or just a swipe down, you can kind of get to where you need to and search whatever you want. And Spotlight searches both your Apple Notes and the, the web itself. The feature that really makes Spotlight Search and Apple Notes kind of the runaway winner for me in terms of getting organized for clinical rotations is OCR and searching text, searching writing, and searching scanned documents. A lot of the times you may take notes in a notebook on rotations and that's what I did too and I would just scan those notes in to my Apple Notes afterwards to digitize them and they're all searchable. If I write something down during a lecture, that's searchable too. Or if I take an image of an algorithm or a surgical landmark, that's also searchable. And when you're trying to find information, oftentimes between patient rooms, trying to figure out what you want and how you want to approach the next patient, speed is everything. And being able to just quickly pull down on your home screen, search what you're looking for, and to get an image that helps you reorient yourself for what you're about to walk into, whether it's a case, a new patient eval, or whatever, that makes the, all the difference in the world. I'm actually surprised that it took me so long to realize this. And I, I kind of wish someone told me this actually when I was starting rotations. As I've gotten more familiar with the concept of like a medical second brain or getting organized for medicine, I've actually noticed that a lot of attendings, fellows and residents actually have their own systems. And more often than not, they actually just use Apple Notes. The other benefit actually of Apple Notes is that you're pretty limited in your ability to organize things. And, I used to spend so much time trying to perfect my note-taking system that I would actually do less with the time that I had because I would spend more of it organizing and less of it doing. With Apple Notes, you're kind of confined to their system of folders, smart folders, and tags, and that's all you get. And I think this actually helps you in the long run because you don't really have time or the ability really to mess around with organization. It's all about getting information down, finding some basic way of filing it, and then just moving on to the thing that, you, that actually matters, which is getting your tasks done. I tend to keep in mind a couple principles when it comes to organizing. The first is to minimize the amount of nested folders you have. I used to get pretty carried away going otolaryngology, then rhinology, then articles, you know, then a different folder for research and a different folder for clinical skills. I think I spent so much time getting from the parent folder down to the actual folder I wanted that I realized it's not really worth it. Now what I do is I'll actually just have like ORL, HNS, underscore, whatever the actual content of the folder is, and I'll just have a bunch of parent folders. And this actually makes it easier because you spend way less time hunting through nested folders. Because if you pick the wrong one, then you have to go all the way back out and find the right one. The next thing I keep in mind is using tags. Recently, in the last couple years or so, Apple introduced this like tagging system without much instruction. And it was kind of up to us to figure out how to make it work for us. I use smart folders and tags, let my phone automatically organize things for me. And you can do this with whatever you want, whether you're learning about GI bleeds during your internal medicine rotation, or you're learning how to do endoscopic sinus surgery. And 
make a smart folder and let your phone do all the organization for you, right? So the next time you come back to it and you want to review your GI bleeds before your shelf, everything's in one spot. Arguably the most important thing you do as a third year medical student is study for your shelf exams and your step two. We can talk about whether that's good or bad in another video, but I think the importance is there. So you world questions and boss questions are gonna be a bulk of your time outside of the hospital. Now, if you talk to a bunch of students, I'm sure they'll say they just probably have like a running Google doc of all the questions. And I've actually found that that works really well for a couple of reasons. The first is that everything for a specific topic is in the same spot. And the second thing is that it's a running list. So you can just go during the weekend and review all the questions you did that week. I actually think it's better in Apple Notes now because in iOS 17, they added a feature allowing you to link between notes. So what I generally would do is I would have my running document of your old questions, the ones that I got right, the ones that I got wrong, reasons why. And then if there's a topic like hemorrhagic shock that I got a question wrong about and I wanted to learn more, I can link to a note that I already have in hemorrhagic shock and kind of peel off and quickly review all the detailed information and then pull back what I need for that question. And this has the benefit of having everything still in the same document, but allowing you to trim it so that it doesn't get too long to the point where you're just reviewing a textbook. I do wanna advise a little bit of caution when it comes to linking between notes. I used to think that having a very sophisticated interconnected system of information meant that I actually knew it well, but I actually found it to be the, the opposite. And this goes back to this idea of the amount of time you spend organizing is the amount of time you don't spend doing something. Use linked notes, but try to be mindful about when you're overlinking between notes and do not, under any circumstance, try to achieve an interconnected web information. It's a complete waste of time. The only place where that matters is up here. And the only way to get that information from your notes into your brain is to study. The last thing I'll go over when it comes to setting up an organization system in Apple Notes is the idea of templates. One of the benefits of a system like Notion, and I'm sure other apps have this as well, is the ability to create like a templated page. So if you're creating that type of page over and over again, you save time. In Apple Notes, this is a little bit harder, but I'll show you guys how I use this shortcut to paste what I want and my template's ready to go. It's a little bit less streamlined, but honestly, it still saves time. And the goal again is to have everything offline and searchable instead of having these perfectly amazing customizable templates, which again, I would argue don't even help your learning that much. Okay, I covered a ton in this video. When I was getting ready for clinical rotations, the concept of a medical second brain or any sort of digital organization was not really well established. What's worked for me during my three months as an ENT sub I was Apple Notes. Your mileage is gonna vary. Uh, this is just one person's experience. I think as long as you're consistent with a system and you avoid the trap of over-organizing, you'll be okay. If you learned something and you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. It lets me know that I'm making the kind of content that you guys care about and that's actually helpful to you. If you have any questions about any of the concepts that I discussed in this video, definitely leave a comment below. I'm always hovering around the comments trying to see what I can clarify and see what else I can talk about. For you Notion users, and I still love Notion dearly, I always will, I have some amazing templates in my description. Be sure to check them out if you're interested. Okay, that's been it. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.